Okay, so yesterday I showed you one way to do a drag interaction in Flinto for Mac, and today I'm gonna to show you another that allows you to drag in any direction, more like a freeform drag. So I've got a rectangle here that I'm gonna drag around, and the way I'm gonna do that is to create a scroll group around it. So I'll click the scroll group button, and I wanna turn on horizontal and vertical scrolling. Now the size of the scroll container should be the size of the entire screen, because I wanna be able to drag anywhere. Now I need to adjust the content size so that there's actually something to drag because if it's the same size as the scroll frame, then you can't drag anywhere. Let me show you that. See, it always just comes back. So I need to make sure that the content is bigger than the actual scroll frame. And I'd like it to be twice as big. So the content size here, it's 500 now. I'll just put times two to make it a thousand. And now it goes a thousand in both directions. So now I can scroll anywhere and it will stop wherever I leave it but it actually goes off the left edge and off the top, and I don't want it to do that. So what you can do is I actually need to make the scroll size slightly smaller, and I need to make it smaller by the amount of the rectangle here. So it's 50 pixels, or 50 points, so I'm just gonna do minus 50 off the width and minus 50 off the height of the scroll content size. Okay, let me try this again. Now it hits the edge and it properly comes to a stop on all the edges. All right, cool. To make this really look like I'm dragging it, I'm gonna add a behavior to the rectangle. So I'm gonna hit Command B to add a behavior. I'll make a new state. And in this state, I'm gonna make it get a little bit bigger and I'm gonna add a shadow to it. And that's gonna make it look like it's floating. From the initial state, I'll make a link that goes to the new state on touch down. And from the new state, I'll make a link going back to the initial state on touch up. Then I'll add another link going back to the initial state on mouse out. So kind of like a typical button behavior setup. Back to the preview. Now you can see when I tap on this, it grows and the shadow appears. And so it looks like it's floating above the surface and I really feel like I'm dragging it around. And I can even throw it. So there you go. That's a simple way to do a freeform drag in Flinto. But we could take this one step further. I wanna make a drag target so that I can drag this onto something. So I'm gonna draw a circle and I'm gonna make it dark color and I'm gonna put it behind the scroll group and I'm gonna put a behavior on this. So I'll click the behavior button. I'm gonna make a new state where this grows really big. From the initial state, I'll make a link to the new state on mouse over. And then from the new state, going back to the initial state on mouse out. Okay, let's try this. You can kind of imagine what might happen here. So if I put my mouse over it, it grows, which uh, isn't quite what I want, but this is kind of a simulation and you can kind of get the, the general effect by if you, if you know how this is meant to work and you go through it in the right steps. So I'm gonna click here and drag on this and then I'll drag it over the circle and you can see it grows like a like some sort of a drag target that I could drop something on. Okay, so a very convincing simulation of a drag effect with the drag target. Now I'm gonna make a new screen, and let's say on this screen, um, the entire screen will be that dark color. So I'm gonna copy that color, paste it onto there, and let's make a transition off of this oval. So I'll make a link going to the new screen with a new transition. And as part of this transition, I'm gonna align the screens with the align screens checkbox. And I'm gonna make this rectangle really small so that it's inside of that circle, round the corners by increasing the radius. And so it grows like that. And then at the end of the transition, my pink rectangle here, I want it to shrink down I'm actually gonna bring that outside of the layer list to the top so that you see it on top here. And now let's try this. Actually, I don't think I made it get small enough. So let's shrink this down even more. Make sure it fades out. Back in the preview. So there I go, I can drag it around. This activates. And now when I let go, oh, you know what? I need to actually make this into a touch up gesture. So I'm gonna to use touch up instead of tap. Okay, let's try it one more time. So now when I drag over here, I'm still holding my mouse down, and when I let go, it completes that transition. 
And that's really cool because the circle looks like it grew and the rectangle that I was dragging shrunk down. So pretty powerful effect. Remember, it's just kind of a simulation of a drag, but for a lot of purposes, if you're doing a demo, this works great. Because obviously you can kind of work around it by like doing this and tapping here, and that's not quite the effect you want. But if you go through it in the right order, kind of playing by the rules, you get a really convincing, really smooth drag effect with all these animations and transitions.